Hey everyone, I'm Adrian, and I make armor. So, as someone who makes armor, I thought it'd be interesting to do a review of some fantasy armors. And recently, I put out a post discussing the idea of, well, after I'm finished with my tutorial series teaching how to make a suit of German Gothic armor for beginners, I was thinking of doing some fantasy armor builds, or taking fantasy armors and making them more realistic. And I floated the idea of Theoden, or the Urukai from Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. And it came back with a 100% vote for the armor of Theoden. So, I figured it'd be a good idea to go through the armor of Theoden, so we can break it down and assess it for realism, practicality, you know, just give my thoughts on the armor overall, again, coming from the perspective of someone who makes armor, and in this case is actually considering making a more realistic version. Overall, I think this is going to be a very easy build to make practical, because it's mostly already there. Now, if you're familiar with medieval European armor, you might be thinking that this is just, you know, it's some fantasy nonsense. Unless you're Polish, and the Winged Hussars arrive. I am absolutely certain that Theoden's armor is based on the armor of the Winged Hussars. Obviously, starting with that breastplate and backplate. What we have here is, well, a segmented breastplate. Uh, these started popping up in Europe in the 16th century during the Renaissance. Uh, mostly with people trying to emulate ancient Rome, uh, hence why there's so many horizontal strips of metal. They were trying to recreate the aesthetic, or recreate what they thought ancient Roman armour would have been like, based on what they had to go with, which was mostly things like statues. So. As people started trying to emulate Lorica Segmentata, they started making. Uh, this is post medieval, but you know. Uh, they started emulating the Lorica Segmentata and started making suits of armor with horizontal bands. And you start seeing articulated breastplates. But the solid upper part of the breastplate just absolutely screams winged hussars to me. And I think that giving Theoden winged hussar armor is absolutely perfect for the elite of the Riders of Rohan. Especially, well, every time I see Helm's Deep I'm reminded of the winged hussars and their famous victory at Vienna. Vienna was under siege and it was being undermined. It was going to blow the walls and then suddenly I believe it is the largest heavy cavalry charge in European history. And of course there's the Sabaton song. So yeah, when you see the Rohirrim coming down that hill, it's like and the Winged Hussars arrived! Oh, if, if you want to know more, I would really recommend checking out Sabaton History. It's a history channel sponsored by a heavy metal band, so... But yeah, uh, whenever I see Theoden and Zama, I just think... Winged Hussars all the way! So, that breastplate will actually be quite easy to make a bit more practical. An issue I do have with it mainly is the width of the upper breastplate really limits the forward range of motion. However, I should point out that 
in the 17th century and you know when you start getting into heavy cavalry going up against uh, people with black powder firearms or you know when you start getting breastplates in the age of gunpowder you know you do start to get wider breastplates like with the uh, cuirassiers of Napoleon or breastplates from the English Civil War. As people started making breastplates to deal with firearms, a lot of them got a bit wider, and that really does limit your forward range of motion. It's a lot harder to swing across your body if you've got a really wide breastplate getting in the way. But if you're in a cavalry charge, and you, you're holding a lance, you can get away with having it a bit wider. Or if you're returning fire with a musket, you don't have to you know, put your arms across your body as much. So, you know, being a little bit on the wide side, there is a historical precedence for it, but if I was going to be rebuilding that for a functional suit of armor, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shrink that down a bit so I can you know, do a bit more sword, fighty, sword fighting. And of course, I'm I'm not too keen on how wide it is over the shoulders, but I might thin that out a bit. Might have straps there, so big chunky bit of metal. But you know, overall, that's a very realistic depiction of breastplate. I mean, for fantasy, that's not that bad. Which then brings me on to the arms. Now, something that bugs the hell out of me in fantasy designs for armor. And I see a lot of cosplayers and laughers. Something that bugs the hell out of me in a lot of fantasy designs of armor is the lack of elbow cops. I It really is something that seriously bugs me when I see people who are trying to capture the aesthetic of a central or western European knight, you know, the classic knight in shining armor look, and they don't have any protection on their elbows. They'll have a fan brace that comes up to here, and they might have a pauldron or a spalder, and then they'll just leave the elbow completely exposed. And that bugs the hell out of me, that look. You might be thinking that's what's going on here. But I don't think so. Because I am absolutely certain that Theoden's armor is based on the Winged Hussars, go and have a look at some Winged Hussars. They're not wearing elbow cops. Because they have the large, elongated, eastern-style van braces. As you see in you know, the Middle East. India, and Eastern Europe. A lot of cosplayers and LARPers and fantasy armor designers will make a fan brace which is kind of just a tapered cylinder, which that's not how you make a properly shaped fan brace. There's shaping in making a fan brace to make it stay in place. But with those Eastern ones, Another thing that makes them different is they're elongated to and extend out over the elbow. So it actually protects the bony part of your elbow and that elongated bit on Theoden's van braces, that's not just there to look good. I reckon that's there to be like the van braces on a winged hussar's armor that's meant to extend out and protect the elbow. So, now, while normally in fantasy armor, I absolutely cringe when I see them not having elbow protection, because this is so clearly influenced by the armor of the Winged Hussars who used Eastern style van braces. But unlike most of the time, where there not being any elbow cop makes me absolutely cringe. Theoden gets a pass because he's wearing Eastern style van braces that protect the elbow. However, 
those spaulders. And yes, I'm calling those spaulders, not pauldrons. Uh, to me, a uh, spaulder is shoulder protection that does not cover the armpit. Unless there's a rondel or basicue. I can see his armpits, so I'm calling those spaulders. If the plates came down solid and covered the armpit, then I would call them pauldrons. But they don't. I hate those spaulders. They got this weird angular thing going on. I'm, I'm pretty certain those are made out of brass with leather overlay, but they've got this weird angle thing going on, which I'm pretty certain is normally done in leather just because it's hard to get depth in them, so people make them in two halves and they'll like glue them together so you get this ridge happening. and it, It's really common in leather fantasy armor. I hate the way it looks. It doesn't look historical to me. Oh, honestly, if I'm building, if I'm battling a realistic version of Theoden's armor, if people really want that kind of weird angle thing, there is a way the Germans used to do it with uh, elbow cops, make them bolded. I'm, I might do an example like that, but honestly, I would just make normal, normal spalders and, you know, Lastly, I think it would make the whole thing just look more realistic. Alright, should we go up or down? Let's go up. That helmet. If I had to place it... I think that helmet is just a uh, embellished version of a late Roman helmet. Uh, some examples have a tiny little bit of a crest going on. Same people showing there's kind of a steel crest. A uh, difference of the big horse crest thing going on with Theoden. Um, though I think some, maybe some gladiators had similar crests on their helmets, but honestly, when I see Theoden's helmet, I see a late Roman helmet. I could also have been inspired by Byzantine or Anglo Saxon helmets, but honestly, that's the same helmet. <laughs> Where do you think those people got the design from? Byzantium is the Eastern Roman Empire. So they had shared technology with the Western Roman Empire. And like the Anglo-Saxons who occupied England and other Europeans who occupied Europe after the fall of the Roman Empire. Where do you think they got the design from? The Roman Empire. So yeah, when I see Theoden's helmet it just screams late Roman helmet to me so overall yeah that helmet because it's so so similar to so many historical examples yeah that, one, that that's a good one and honestly a lot of those late roman helmets were segmented so yeah i'll probably do just to make it easier for people to copy my build uh i I think I'll do a segmented one. So, if anyone wants to build along at home and they're a beginner, I got you guys. Moving down below the waist, he's got this weird thing going on where he's got tassets, like proper European tassets, and he's got some strange scale tassets things going on. Now, of course, the proper European tassets, they're European tassets. I don't need to explain that. They're a the little thing that hangs off of your breastplate to, uh, you know, cover the gap between your cuirass and your cuisses, your thigh defenses. But he hasn't got that kind of cuisse or thigh protection. He's got these weird scale things, which I. Okay. I've seen a lot of reenactors wearing them. I've seen them depicted in Byzantine art. I should say modern art trying to depict what a soldier of the Byzantine Empire might look like. <sighs> yeah, I've seen people who do fighting at reenactments wear scale, kind of those scale tacit skirt things. But I don't know 
a historical source for that exact style. Yes, I know, there's... I've seen one example of a winged hussar with scale thigh defenses, like he had creases made of scales, but they weren't like that. And of course, there are skirts of scale in you know, Europe. Skirts of scales, or folds of scales, did exist in Europe. But they're not made like that with the split. Now, maybe this is something from further east. Could be Mongolian. I've heard that suggested. Uh, I'm thinking more, much further east than, you know, Poland. But, you know, I can't place it as being something that's historical, even though I've seen a lot of reenactors wear basically that exact kind of scale skirt thing which I'm quite glad that he wears it on the front I see a lot of people wearing them at the sides which makes a lot less sense unless you're riding a horse but if those are meant to cover the hip down to the knee it would make sense to wear them on the front of your body you see a lot of lapas and cosplayers and you know, people wearing costume armor wear stuff similar to that and they wear it on the sides uh, but leave like the center line straight to their thighs completely and groin completely exposed so I really like that they have it at the front and while I can't pinpoint an exact historical example of armor like that. A lot of people do fight in armor, you know, or scale skirt thingies like that. So, if it works for them, I'm going to give it a pass for realism. And that brings us down to the graves. From what I've seen, these look to me more like a Greco-Roman style of grave that comes up over the knee. I haven't had too detailed of a look at them, but you know, uh, if you're having graves that come up and protect the knee, that's a thing that happened in ancient Greece and Rome. Unless I can get in and have a really good sort of look at it, I'm I'm not spotting anything wrong from it from here. Uh, as long as the straps are in the right place to stop it from flooding down your foot, I think we're good for those graves. So yeah, overall, that's quite a realistic and practical design of armor that's really close to a, a lot of armors that actually existed in the real world. And with a little bit of tweaking, just to, you know, change a few things to improve the fit and shaping, if we made that out of steel, I reckon we could get that being a practical and realistic suit of armor. Yeah, yeah, you could improve it by adding mail in the gaps and adding gauntlets and rope protection, but you know, not everybody in history was a complete tank. And, you know, you look at some of the stuff the Winged Hussars were running around with, or other soldiers in history who weren't completely tanked up, you know, overall, I think that's a pretty good suit of armor. There's no glaring weak spots. Maybe the throat, but hey, he's wearing an open-face helmet, so, you know, tanking up the throat and then leaving your face exposed, eh, seems a little odd, so I can forgive him going a little bit of light. And, yeah, overall... I definitely approve of this as a fantasy design. And I am kind of looking forward to when I can finally get around to building a real world version of it. So, after I get done with my German Gothic and some commissions, we'll see what I can come up with. And if there are any other armors you would like me to assess, please suggest them in the comments below. Alright everyone, see ya.